everyone. Hello. <laughs> Good evening to Lulu and Fix and Andraste and Elvin and Cornhole and Echo and Bev. Good evening. Pardon me. NASA. Hello, Anna. Hello, Strange. Hello, ATP Carrot Butts Echo. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, depending on where you are on this beautiful planet. Thank you so much for being here for yet another ad hoc live stream. Happy Tuesday. It is indeed Tuesday evening here <laughs> in um, moonlit Brisbane. And finally, summer's decided to go away. So that's nice. This frog in my throat hasn't. It's still here, Kermit. Um, but it's starting to cool down, which is lovely. <laughs> Annie with an L, lovely to see you. I'm sorry if that was, <laughs> if that was a shock. But, sh uh, chat, <laughs> pardon me, sorry, still finding my words. Chat, guess what? Chantel's going back to Canada. Yay! <laughs> finally, finally, it took so long. It's finally happening. Good morning, Elizabeth, hello. Um, so, so today, there's a couple of things we're going to watch. Sorry, don't mind me, I got out of the shower and... Uh, I don't know why, I don't know why, I just have... I lose, I feel like I lose 15 minutes before the stream starts. I feel like an hour... An hour and a half before the stream starts, I'm like, yep, no, great, I'll just set every, everything up now. And then I, it gets to, like, it gets to, like, 7.45, and just time stops, or goes too fast, probably that one. Anyway, today we're going to be reacting to three pieces of content, two of which from Everyday Miriam and Chantal Marie, including Live Dinner and uh, Applebee's Mukbang. <laughs> now, the revelations about Chantal's future and what she's planning to do and all of that interesting dramatic stuff uh, is happening in the Applebee's mukbang. I was going to come online last night and cover the live dinner, but I'm not going to lie. It's an hour and a quarter and I don't think anything, I don't think one thing, to be fair, not a thing of substance is often said on Chantal's live streams, but not one interesting thing is said um, during the live dinner one. So my thought, and I know <laughs> how much no, no, Lottie, good to see you. Hello, I hope you're having a good day. I, uh, I don't know what temperature it is in Brisbane at the moment. Hold on, I got distracted. Temp in Brisbane now. It's currently 23 degrees Celsius, which is 73 degrees Celsius, which is, uh, sorry, Fahrenheit, which is a lovely, like, cool Tuesday evening, you know? It's great. <laughs> um... Oh, are we on top? Sorry, we were on top chat. We're on live chat now. We're all fine. Everything's fine. Not a problem. Uh, Deb, hello. Lovely to see you. I can see you. Yes, I hope you're well. Uh, yeah, so we're going to give the live dinner a try. Now, chat, I, I'm going to... Mm, I need your help because we're also going to be watching Glitter and Lasers today. And it's going to be um, a most recent upload entitled, Can I Be a Runner Facing the Hard Truth? Now, I've already watched this, and I found it particularly interesting, and I would like to watch it together. Um, but I don't know whether or not to do it now, while everyone's still waking up on the other side of the planet, and to, like, warm up the vocals. Or do I do it in the middle when I get sick of live dinner? Because, like I said, it's probably going to be about a ten-minute escapade before I just want to escapade out of watching it. Do you want to do it now? A poll. No, you just yell at me. Let's do it now. <laughs> I think now is a good option because this is... Hold on. Well, it's just a blank screen, actually. Let's start with Anna. Yeah, I think Anna's a good warm-up, you know? Yeah, I think that's smart. Um, also, hi, my name's Zach. Lovely to meet you if you're new, and thank you very much for returning. If you are coming back, I'm not a mental or physical healthcare professional. Just a guy lost weight, talks about things on the internet, watches way too much of too many people. I'm also not here to bully, shame, hate, or I saw you humiliate. Just here to talk about the produced and monetized content that we see here on this platform, because it's all about what choices, choices about what we say, choices about what we put on the internet, choices. Seven degrees in central Scotland. Elizabeth, that sounds lovely. I would like to swap. I would like to swap. Okay, so we're going to start off with Anna, which I know not everybody's here and that's okay, but you can just like hang out or not, whatever. <laughs> Get yourself a beverage because I've got one. I've got a good old um, Pepsi Max soda stream here that I need to pour into a, a receptacle. It is in a receptacle, but I want it in a nicer receptacle. Um, <laughs> it's a great way to start the day, Lottie. Yeah. Think about a run. <laughs> Think about maybe going for a run and then muck bags. Great. Fabulous. <laughs> Good start. Um, what was I going to say? 
I don't know. I've just had such a. I've had such a big day. I've had such a big day. Anyway, let's get started with Anna. With can I be a runner facing the hard truth? This is her most recent upload, and she had. Well, she has got some other uploads that I was thinking about watching. Like the she did a spring. I think it was Stacy Lane Bryant or something. That's a drag race reference, by the way. Um, Lane Bryant. Um, like a spring dress haul, but I watched it and I didn't really find anything really all that, all that interesting. It was just florals for spring groundbreaking. Uh, Annie with an L, lovely to see you this morning as always, and thank you for the super chat. <laughs> and he says, spoiler alert from my dad, the lifetime marathoner, her, her, no, love, no, <laughs> the Anna running. So here's my thing. Thank you for the super chat as well, Annie. Here's my thing with Anna. There's a lot of things with Anna. The last time we spoke about Anna outside of a clothing haul was, oh my goodness, look at all these high-protein processed BS foods that I can eat. Great, girly. Something that was told to me um, when I... So you all know about my... What did I do? I feel like I'm just... Dri Is something dripping on me? <laughs> I feel like I'm just wet all over. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... Something that was explained to me, my health gurney, right, I didn't do it really well, I did lose a very large amount of weight, but I didn't do it over a long period of time, I was very restrictive with my food, and I wasn't really focused on exercise. The thing I was focused on was roller skating and walking, and those two things were kind of my primary, all I was really looking at was getting 10,000 steps a day in, and usually looking at like... 20 to 30 minutes on skates. And that was because I wanted to learn something new and fun. And it might, I, I think it's just me. I have shadows following me. <laughs> um, and I'm getting very distracted. Those were the two, those were the two fitness goals that I have and that had rather. And then once I lost a whole heap of weight, I realized I also lost a whole heap of muscle at the same time, which made me kind of sad because then I started in a gym and realized that I was like really exhausted and really tired really quickly. So turned everything thing on its head readdressed my relationship with food, got into lifting weights, blah, blah, blah. Now we're here two years later. Great. I'm happy. My relationship with food will always need work and that's absolutely okay. But I can now like consistently see growth over the last two years at lit picking up and moving and putting down heavy things. It's great, but that's not my only focus. I do, um, I do work with a professional and Currently, the goal has been mobility and flexibility and doing kind of a hybrid approach of lift heavy things, but also maybe learn how to like not abuse your joints, learn how to stretch things out and repetitive, low volume, high repetition movements in things like ankles and knees so that I can build mobility, I can build flexibility and I can build stability, working on supplementary muscles around joints and all of that stuff so that I can age gracefully um, <laughs> but I can also age into my joints. Now, Anna, I think is a little bit older than me. I can't tell you how different joints feel when you do experience weight loss in that same vein, even at my lightest, I can't tell you how, how, how like experimenting with jogging was probably one of my worst mistakes ever because recognizing that after, uh, even after, you know, major weight loss, even after losing muscle, um, just the shock, the pure shock on my joints was awful. Absolutely awful. Um, what I then realized after speaking with a professional is that I can get the benefits of pretty much all of that walking, <laughs> which isn't to say that not everybody should run. Everybody can give running a go. Sure, go for it. But boy, howdy, is it tough on the joints, you know? <laughs> Big Mac, lovely to see you. Hello, thank you for being here. And thank you for the super chat. Big Mac says, I'm meeting my PT for the first... Ooh, first session on Thursday. I'm trying to become a low-fat burger. You do it, mate. I That's great. Chat, can we get some love and support for Big Mac in the chat, please? That's amazing. I Look, I, I also know that, it, like, PTs aren't all built the same, and that's fine. Like... I highly recommend if, like, giving them a go. Do you know what I mean? Like, test them out. Because I've had a couple, um, and I can definitely tell you the ones <clears throat> the ones who kind of get me more and the ones who are just kind of putting me on a program, if that makes sense. So my current one is amazing because they will help me build 
like hybrid workouts through the week so that I'm spending like an hour in the gym. I'm still getting an hour's worth of walking in every day, but it's, it's, it, I hate saying functional because I feel like that was taken over by the, um, the, oh, the CrossFitters. Um, I don't want to say functional, but, um, definitely good to have like a goal in mind and don't make the goal just like weight loss when it comes to PT, because I feel like, although obviously exercise and weight loss complement one another and often go hand in hand, like calorie deficit is where you're like 90% success rate on, on weight loss might be addressed. But if your goal is things like moving more, um, like heart health, joint pain, um, uh, strength or muscle mass, um, all, all of those things, like good to have a conversation with a professional and be like, these are my goals. These are the things that I want to do. And Anna's going to talk about it as well. Um, so we'll get into it, but, um, but yeah, yeah. Just like every professional, it's always good to have a chat, you know, <laughs> but that's awesome. Congratulations. I hope, uh, I hope the session goes really well. And he says, Poppy, that was my dad's point at 70. He's now a cyclist because his doctor basically said F off <laughs> or I'll have to replace your needs. He lives with the pain, but wouldn't recommend it. No, I don't, I don't think, I don't, I don't know. Considering the amount of time we as humans, well, maybe less now, but are kind of designed to spend on our feet moving. Um, yeah, running is just such a, running, running seems to me just a really quick way to, to have unenjoyable joint pain, you know? For the benefit that it can give you, I kind of feel... And, like, if you enjoy going for a jog or going for a run, that's great. Like, more power to you. But someone who's built like me, I would... Ugh, just the the pain. And I and because of my... Because of the way I've been in my body <laughs> for however long, um, like, I still get... Like, I've told you all the story about dislocating my knee and putting it back in manually not smart don't do that <laughs> don't, just don't do that um but there will come points in time where i experience pain in my knees and that's not because like that's a that's a cascading effect of a lot of things but i also understand that i have not been very kind to them um but no n n jogging jogging running no i'll take i'll take walking it'll get me there slower but you know at least it'll save my knees anyway Let's get into um, Miss Anna Glitter and Lasers and Can I Be a Runner? Also, lovely to see you all today. I hope you're having a great day. Please make sure you take care of yourselves. Drink your water, wear your sunscreen, get your steps in. <laughs> Maybe go and stretch. Go and stretch. Your knees will appreciate it. We love knees here. I used to really love running. I used to really love it. And I'm not going to lie. The opening of this is very dramatic. <laughs> And it has felt so far for me for so long. Good, you guys. <laughs> I think that's what's most exciting about today. Is that? Ah, uh, who mentioned netball? Yeah, that'd do it. That'd that'd be rough on the knees. Oh yeah. That possibility is endless. Possibility is endless. I think, I think she may be recreating a Nike ad here. And sometimes. Just do it. It just takes putting yourself out there and doing the damn thing to start the journey. Okay, here's here's where we start off with Poppy sharing his unasked for opinions. Yes, just go out and do the damn thing, but also acknowledge your own limitations and meet your expectations properly. <laughs> like, there has never been a point in time in my life where I've said, I'm just going to go out and run. Because I, I know my own limitations. Well, there's a whole heap of reasons, but one of them would be, I know my limitations and I know how sore that's going to be and I know I'm just going to put myself in pain. And the thing with, the thing with like muscular versus joint pain, right? I will go to the gym and I will lift heavy things and I will get DOMS the next day and it'll last for two days and I won't be able to sit down and I won't be able to walk because my hammies or my glutes feel like they are on fire for like 72 hours. And that's okay. <laughs> that's okay because that's just deep, is it deep? No, delayed. Um, that's just delayed onset muscle soreness. And that's okay, because I'm taking my muscle and I'm tearing the fibers on a, on a micro level. I'm tearing all those little micro fibers in the hope that they will heal and then get bigger. And then I'll be able to lift and move heavier things. Great. 
Joints don't work like that. You can't hurt your joints purposefully and then be like, oh no, that cartilage is just going to heal. No, those ligaments will be fine. It's fine. We'll just tear up those ligaments and get them to heal stronger. Not how joints work. Very different. <laughs> That's what today's about for me. Starting a journey. Starting? Okay, someone's going to have to catch me up with the, on the timeline and the lore of Anna Glitter and Lasers. She's to I feel like she's been telling me she's a runner for like the last three years. Has that not been the case? No? Is this a commercial? It certainly feels like a commercial. Also, I'm pretty- no, that's- is that the car she was jogging past before? It doesn't matter. Oh my god, Cornhole, are you okay? <laughs> also, I gotta pour- I gotta pour myself a beverage. Hold on, we're gonna zoom in. I'm gonna- <laughs> It's unfortunate. I mean, it's it was going to happen regardless of the still, I suppose. But it is unfortunate that at this, at this upload quality, this is <laughs> just the potato camera of it all. <laughs> you know, I thought I was going to... This feels very performative. Color me cynical, but it does. I come out here and I was going to run like a quick... This is, uh, from what I've learned from people who are far more informed and have more chill than I do, is that our joints do not, in fact, enjoy laughing as a mortar and pestle. No. No. And the, like, the crunch, Lottie, you know? Like, you, you just need, you never want to hear that crunch. <laughs> you know, I thought I was going to come out here and I was going to run like a quarter of a mile, and here I just did a mile. So, it just... My body just constantly impresses me and surprises me, and it is such an exciting thing. It's just really exciting. This level of excitement and energy does not continue through the whole piece. And I can't even express it because hey, it's one. like, there aren't words. There aren't words to feel like I have my body back. And it's really awesome. I used to love this so much. Just being able to do that today just felt freaking awesome. Not to be rude, but she's missing nail polish on her. I love pinky. this so much. <laughs> just being able to do that today. Just. I know she's crying about how happy she is that she could. She's finally got her mobility back or whatever. But I'm wildly distracted by the polishless pinky. Well, she says this must have been before people had the audacity to tell her good job. I hope no one in the, her comment section was telling her good job because she would have lost it. <laughs> she would have lost it. Anyway, sorry. Just need to point that one out. <laughs> A mile is 1.6 kilometers. Oh, well, that's helpful. Get awesome. The coffee stirring pinky. <laughs> It does feel like an ad. Where are we? Oh, production! Big changes take a long time. They do. Okay. Good job, Anna. So today we are at the Run Lab, and we are here because I want to run a 5K, but I realize that in a bigger body, there's a lot of challenges when running. She got her pink. She's got her pinky on now. Wait, what happened to your polish? <laughs> So that's the that's the real mystery in all of this. What happened to her pinky polish? <laughs> so I wanted to work with somebody who also not the tool chest in the doctor's office. There's a lot of challenges when running. So I wanted to work with somebody who What is all of this? What is this? I love her hat. I love your hat could like help me run correctly so I don't injure myself. I also really like them because when I talk to them on the phone, they don't buy in. She lost a press on. Are those press ons? The BS that bigger bodies can't run. In fact, it's like one of their goals to show people that more people can run. So today I'm gonna run on a treadmill and they're gonna tell me what I'm doing wrong. I'm gonna get my ish together. Again, I'm really confused because I thought she's been running for years. What's the story with the run? I feel like I feel like I've been listening to Anna talking about running for years. Maybe my wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff is acting up. Also, I just need to hold on. Just, just need to just look at this tiny little water bottle. Look at this 
Look at this ridiculously sized water bottle. Excuse me, Run Labs, if you could just install like a water fountain and stop killing turtles, because I'm assuming you're giving these out as like get a free water when you come in and do something. This is the world's smallest bottle. This is smaller than Chantel's bottles of water. You know? <laughs> essentially, in terms of, like, running. Okay, let's do this. All right, let's go. Hi. Good morning. Hi, I'm Dr. Kim Davis. I'm the founder and CEO of Run Lab here. In I did have a look because they keep calling each other doctor, so I was really interested to understand what type of doctor these people were. So, doctor... Where are you? Dr. Kimberly A. Davis is... Uh, is hold on, I had it here. Hey, here we go. Um, uh, doctorate in Cairo, I, I can't even, words, what are they? <laughs> doctorate in chiropractic. Doctorate in chiropractic. In addition to a bachelor's degree in human biology and a doctorate in chiropractic. Is that right? Is it a doctorate in chiropractic? Doctorate of chiropractic? Doctorate in chiropractic. Doctorate in Words seem to be losing all meanings. But anyway, that was interesting. Austin, Texas. My feeling and the reason for starting this company is because I feel that anybody... She has a doctorate in chiropractic. Wait, did I say that right? <laughs> doctorate in chiropractic. Sorry, doctorate in chiropractic. That makes even less sense, but very good. <laughs> Who wants to run should be able to run. And... <laughs> Lily, lovely to see you. I hope you're having a great Tuesday. Lily says, chiropractors aren't doctors. <laughs> but she calls herself doctor. She even, she even had it in the little title card. <laughs> She's not an um, endocrinologist. No. No. <laughs> we're, we're all built very individually, right? Hey, so Oceana, good to see you. I love her hat, though. This... We base our process on helping people understand their own bodies and the way that they should move unique to their structure. So right. there's no there's no right way to move. There's no right way to run. It all depends on you and the way you're built. So that's kind of what this company is built on and why we're here. I, I was going to ask you, what is your... The tool, again, this red toolbox in the back is sending me. So what's your... We are in the local garage. What's your goal besides just being able to run? Do you have... Okay, so my goal for right now, and here's... Is everyone else hearing that massive echo? It's the thing that's been like really helpful on this journey for me is not setting goals that are like so grandiose. Yeah. Oh, Amy has a note saying, apparently three months ago, she uploaded a short of her first visit to this place. So wouldn't she have done this then? She's talking about like learning how to run. No? Okay. <laughs> Brandon, thank you for being here for 20 months, mate. Good to see you. Brandon says, I have a doctorate in good vibes and bone snapping. Ooh, what queen. <laughs> Sorry. Dr. Queen. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Uh, She's a doctor like Dr. Phil is a doctor, but weirdly Dr. Phil is less to Lulu. I never get to like get to them or it takes so long to get to them that like, yeah, it's, it, I lose faith in the process, right? So I- So chat, forgive me because I'm not one for chiropractic. Um, is that, that's the one where they like pop and lock everything, right? Like, they would have a field day with me. I would be just- Call me Dr. Crunchy. Um, if, 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 um, I was about to call her Ambie, sorry, Anna, um, if Glitter and Lasers were serious about learning more about her talent, strengths, and weaknesses when it comes to running, who would, who do you think, like a sports therapist or something? I don't know. Is, like, is there a doctor? <laughs> the bone snapping. <laughs> I thought just like it's a first goal that felt like realistic. No, well, we'll get to her shortly. For me is a 5K. Kind of the way the process will work is we'll sit down with you, we'll go through your history, we'll go through uh -huh. your range of motion, we'll, go, we'll find your strengths, your weaknesses, all the things. Yeah. Then we'll put you on a treadmill, we'll film you from all the different directions, and then we'll aggregate all that information, and then we'll sit down and we'll say, okay, you know, based on your current... Oh, physios, of course, Boop. I didn't even think of that. Level of fitness, your mm -hmm. current... Exercise physiologist. Oh, Daily, good to see you. I hope you're having a good time. A uh, good day. Words. 
strengths your current weaknesses you know what what is a training plan sort of yeah i would be interested to see if Anna went to like uh um because i know sports science is such a massive thing uh, so i do wonder whether or not she could go to a sports like a sports doctor does that make sense like to get their take on it versus this this group of chiropractics chiro- chiropractics chiropractors it's such a confusing word <laughs> look like for you oh that's right annie yes um what are the things you need to yeah. work on to make sure you don't yeah i definitely think if if glitter and lasers were taking this a bit more seriously i don't know this all feels very like spawn spawn con paid content like these are my mates and they're giving me like free sessions to put them on my youtube do you know what i mean get injured i don't trust it obviously our number one priorities you can never get faster you can never run longer if you're injured and so first yeah. order of business is sort of injury proofing your mm-hmm. body and because you have this big foundation that you're building from of being active for oh. this period never mind sorry i instantly went to ambi being called a big cherry um i don't like any of this advice <laughs> i don't like any of this advice of we just need to make sure that you're not injured first. Do you know the quickest way to injury while running? I'm assuming, because I would never. I'm assuming would be, like, I I don't know. I don't think, unless you're running away from something, I just don't know. Recreational running, I feel like, needs a lot of preparation. Like, it ha- it sucks to say, like, and I shouldn't say you need to, but it would benefit to reduce injuries if you were prepared. And I just don't think you are, Miss Glitter. Great time. Yeah, I'm talking about, you know, all of that stuff is going to be easier than somebody who's just getting off the couch and starting for the first time. All right, Anna, this is Dr. Roden. So he's going to be. Oh, up. Dr. Roden. Hold on. I had him up as well. Where are you? Um, Dr. Roden. He is graduated magna cum. <laughs> <laughs> Loudy, um, with his bachelor in kinesthesiology. 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 What's movement? Kinesi. Kin- I thought it was. I thought there was a T in there. Kinesthesiology. No. Kinesthesiology. What's that? I'm learning science today. Again, Doctor Crunchy. Kinesthesiology means the study of movement. Am I? Ha- Maybe I'm just pronouncing that word wrong. Probably strawberries. Term is also used by complementary medicine. Me- practitioners to describe a form of therapy that uses muscle monitoring biofeedback to look at what may be causing imbalances in your body and attempts to relieve these imbalances i'm getting a little i feel like we're getting a little close to the medical medium in all of this but okay received his doctorate of physical therapy from loma linda university cool oh, charge you nice care to you. nice to meet Take you. you the whole process and the assessment and all the fun things so today is a- so many strawberries today. Hey unicorn pondu, good to see. You. Big words are hot. About range of motion, strength, <laughs> how you're walking, how you're moving. What- Magna cum laude everywhere. Yes. <laughs> aches and pains you have. We want to see structurally what is going on, how irritable the tissues. Oh, are. neuro spicy. Thank you so much for gifting five memberships. By the way, mate, I just saw it. Um, welcome or welcome back to Fixin' Sara, Two Tiki Wednesday and. Susanna, hello everybody. Please make sure you thank the lovely Neuro Spicy for the gift. Thanks, mate. I hope you're having a good day. What you have, Doctor of Word. Structurally, what is going on, how irritable the tissues are or are not. And then that will help us kind of create the profile that is you as far as getting your journey to that 5K and okay. whatever else. Right. So we're measuring things like gait, flexibility, range of motion. Cool. You want to do The first thing Dr. Rodin did was sit me down and ask me a ton of questions about my medical history. He wanted to have a clear picture of where I was at currently, and then also understand any aches and pains I was experiencing that might be able to be corrected through gait training and physical therapy. He then continued with a physical analysis. So looking at the flexibility and mobility of my- Hey Tina, good to see you. Congratulations, mate. I feel ya. He even- I, I, yeah, I just, I don't know. Being someone who has been bigger than I am now, I just, the thought of running just makes my, like, every joint in my body scream. Every joint. Every single one. With a physical analysis. So, looking at the flexibility and mobility. Oh, sorry, she's really quiet. Ability of my joint. He even felt inside each joint to better understand how they connected, what inflammation as I have, and also if there is any existing damage. Not the feet. Oh, my God, Mick. 
Mick, are you here? Mick, for free and everything. Look at this. Do you think Glitter and Lasers is on Wiki Feet? <laughs> oh dear. We do have fun here. <laughs> Feet on main, everyone. Looking at the flexibility and mobility of my joints, he okay. even felt inside each joint to better understand how they connected, what inflammation I might have, and also if there is any existing damage. Is this spot different than this spot? A little. Yeah, well, that's the front of the, that's the shin, and that's the calf. <laughs> well, yeah, but not much. Look, but, I'm no, I'm no Dr. Crunchy. Yes. <laughs> but there is a notable increase along. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, super tired on the shin bone, not so tired on the calf muscle. There's probably an imbalance somewhere there. I mean, we're all imbalanced, though. The same thing out here? No. Okay. All of this would be used to design a plan that worked for me to help me walk and run in a way that was safe on my joints, and prevented injury. All right, so at this point, we are doing the gait analytics. So we walk in- I don't even know what type of shoes. Like, man, what type of shoes? Let's talk about shoes. Jog, depending on the, uh, the app. Update is not on wiki feed. <laughs> Athletes capabilities. In a shoe and out of shoe, looking at their biomechanical faults or their benefits of what they're doing well. Once we know what those are, that will then create an individual protocol or plan of attack to address those anomalies that are causing stresses in different tissues in the body um, that are causing their aches and pains or just the inefficiency of their run. I feel like I don't trust this this doctor. I don't trust you, doctor. Or I don't know why, you just, I don't get trust. Working harder versus smarter. So I'm gonna take you half step forward from here. Not the candies in the jar on the table in the back. My eyes directly. <laughs> Perfect. So we're gonna go head to toe. I'm gonna make a bend, twist, turn. We're looking for. No, I'm sorry, doctor. It's heads, shoulders, knees, and toes. That's the that's the rhyme. Big missed opportunity here. Huge. For any limitations, if you do experience any pain or aches during it, please let me know. Okay. All right. So again, starting. Natural ginger. Good to see you. Me too, buddy. The top as best you can. Rotate your head as far as you can, both directions. Just like our old days in hopscotch, single foot, single foot. <laughs> All good. These are challenging. We do them on purpose, right? Yes, I feel humbled. <laughs> I feel kind of suspicious that we didn't get the footage of the hopping on one foot. I mean, maybe you can, again, I'm not a runner. Maybe, maybe running's easier than hopping on one foot. But what I will tell you is it took me like a year after starting gym to be able to do, like, to be able to fully recognize that one, standing on one foot, really hard. Two, like independent toe control, also really hard. And like the muscles and tendons that run up the top of the foot that like wrap around the ankle and connect and everything. Really like super interesting. I don't know the biomedicine. Biomedicine, sure. The biomechanics of it all. But it is really interesting to experience like a slow but progressive improvement in things like balance. Um, balance and like finer motor control, especially because you don't really think of feet. Like feet are just kind of the stumps at the end of the legs. It's an inspirational quote you're welcome to take. Um, but they're just kind of like the stumpy flesh at the end of the leg. I don't really think of my feet all that often. Um, until you start working out and you realize that like things like lunges require like movement in pretty much every joint from hip to toe. Um, and like even things like squatting, you have to recognize like a flat foot versus elevated. Like I, when I do my squats, I still like to elevate my heels because my calves, because of walking on them with a bigger body for so long, my calves are like fucking concrete. It's great, but it sucks. <laughs> It sucks because they're not very flexible, they're not very loose, and it takes a really long time to walk them, warm them up. So when I do my warm-up set for squats, I'll elevate my heels because it feels so much... It feels like I can get so much deeper when the calf muscle is contracted, um, when my ankles and my knees are slightly closer. Anyway, sorry, rambling. See, it's not, no, I cannot hop anymore. It's all big feet talk today. <laughs> Is this music? Then we're gonna stand up on the treadmill. Can I hold on? Initially, yes. 
but ideally you're gonna try to walk without. Oh, I can walk without it, but I'm saying running. I don't. Also, has she got her brows done? They seem done. Don't. Done? We'll see. I'm scared. Of course we're scared. <laughs> we're only gonna do whatever's comfortable. Okay, we'll okay. make it work. We're gonna start with a walk. I'm gonna get you up to what it would be a comfortable pace for you. Okay. We're just gonna incrementally go up and you're like, yeah, this is about the speed I walk at right now. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna start it. Next, we moved on to the physical activity segment of the analysis. And this is the part I was most scared for because I was gonna have to run on a treadmill. I'm not trying to be shady, but the voiceover does not match. We're walk, this is a walk, we're walking. And if you don't know this, treadmills are usually not safe for bigger bodies. They're just not designed for us. I think when you're- I feel like this treadmill in particular is probably designed for <clears throat> lots of different people and capacities. General, general treadmills, like, I understand a lot of them do have weight limits, but I, I feel like this one specifically might be built for, built for, you know, everybody or most bodies. Hey Sam, good to see you. <clears throat> Oh, you got a 5k run in this morning? And then you woke up. <laughs> Good to see you. Hi, happy Tuesday. Sorry, Fro croaky. Froaky? Froaky. Outside, you just don't think about it, right? Here, I'm like, am I gonna fall off of it? What's the speed? Whereas when I'm outside, I can just be like, whatever speed feels right. And that might be different in each step. Yeah, I could. I guess I could see that. But again, if you're out for a jog, I feel like you're keeping a relatively consistent pace. I don't know. I was watching. There was a really cute um, little uh, animation of a dog on Twitter that I saw when I was um, doom scrolling, and it was like it was the dog walking, and then it was the um, the like feet animation underneath it to explain where the weight was being or where the <clears throat> pressure was being distributed on the bottom of the foot pad. And it was like, this is a walk, this is an amble, this is a canter, this is a gallop, this is a like full-blown run. And it was really interesting to see like where dogs put their weight or where the feet are touching the ground um, when they do all of those things. I lost my point. Oh yeah, Dr. Crunchy. Let's just take her out for a jog then. Like, we don't need to do it on the treadmill, we can just do it outside. Second self. Oh. Fortunately, the one at Rod Lab was safe, but that- Hold on, we got the shoes back on now. That did not erase my anxiety based on previous experiences. Okay. It's an evolutionary process when it comes to your walking and your running. Like, we're gonna fix your walk as well. Start at the walk, move to the run. Baby steps. Not just make you a good runner, but make you a good walker. Okay. Because a lot of the cons- Again, hasn't she been running for years? I feel gaslit. Concepts that we're gonna apply in your jogging and your running, uh -huh. also apply in your walk. At the end of my assessment, I found out some- Bloody definitely mixed, but also, I mean, it doesn't know no chill, clearly. Pretty bad news. Ooh, hello. Oh. It turns out I don't walk properly. I have straight legs. Is she not wearing socks? Well, she wasn't wearing socks before the treadmill. I think she's got red socks on. No, she's got a little red that sock. That's erase lip. my anxiety based yeah. on previous experiences. It's okay, everyone. We've got socks. It's fine. It's an evolutionary process. We're just, we're really swerving into a feet channel. Plus when it comes to your walking and your running, like we're going to fix your walk as well. Not just- <laughs> Hey, Amy, good to see you. Make you a good runner, but make you a good walker. Okay. Because a lot of the concepts that we're going to apply in your jogging and your running uh -huh. also apply in your walk. At the end of my assessment, I, I still don't trust Dr. Crunchy. Found out some pretty bad news. I oh, know. It turns out I don't walk properly. I have straight legs, which means I do not bend my knees at all when I walk. Oh. So before I even thought about running, I was going to have to relearn how to walk because. Yeah. I mean, this is not relatable to me because I do. I, I mean, I do bend my knees, but I, my feet gait is very, um, like, again, this comes back to squatting, squatting. <laughs> You learn so much from being unable to squat properly. So when I stand, when I stand facing forward, my feet, instead of, it is, it's all foot content all the time. My feet, instead of being parallel, parallel, perpendicular, parallel, parallel, perpendicular, parallel. Um, with my knees, for instance, my feet will both want to point outwards at like 45 degrees. Um, which, which isn't great. And I have spent like two years trying to, remind myself like toes in toes in toes in um 
And it can get very frustrating in the gym when you realize like you're doing something and you're like, oh wait, that feels really different. Like a, um, like a leg raise machine doing that with like direct toes versus outward pointing toes, like targets, different muscles in the leg. You can feel it. Um, and again, I'm very confused with your story, Anna. I thought we'd been doing this for a while, but I mean, whatever. Let's bend your knees, everyone. Is right now, I was at serious risk of injury. Do you think this is actually possible? I'm being really real with you right now. DX, lovely to see you. DX has a note. Just wanting to announce an announcement. I'm no longer focusing on hate and negativity, except when I do. Also, this is the last time I address this. Well, it's good to see you and good to know, DX. Hopefully a happier, brighter future ahead of you. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, I'm not being, like, delu delu delusional. Sorry, I was going to say delulu, like the kids say, but... Yeah. That's true. Oh, designer. <laughs> Very possible. Like, we have people in every shape and size and form and different diagnoses that come in here, and they have different goals, whether it be marathons, 5K, just walking with their kids, feeling mm -hmm. safe. Just talking with a patient yesterday. They want to be able to go to Galveston, walk in and out of the water without not feeling pain or efficient. And oh God, I can hear her whimpering off screen. Anna, is everything okay? And so practicing mechanically what is different about an incline. Oh gosh, she looks like she's about to burst into tears. Oh, this is so awkward. Incline versus a decline or unstable services. And what changes mechanically is super- she's telling a story about a client. <laughs> Patient, sorry, <laughs> about a, a patient from yesterday. And she's <laughs> very awkward. Important for them. She's quite dramatic, yes. And they want to be able to do that with their friends on Thanksgiving. So like, for them. Mick, you're here. You need to go back a little bit. We saw so many feet. <laughs> That's their marathon. Yeah. And we're going to crush it and take names and kick butt for that thing. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm like getting teary eyed. It's not intentional, but it's just like, um, that was me like a year ago. And this just gives me hope that there's like still so much more. Cause sometimes you wonder like, oh gosh, she needs a friend chat. She needs a good Judy. Okay. I've been at this for a year, which I know technically a year is not a long time, but like, oh, it has been a year. Good to know. It feels like a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Lottie's note. <laughs> I'm not saying you're Delulu. I'm just gently suggesting you change your goals and also keep banging us. <laughs> Is it going to be discount code Delulu for 10% off your, your first session with Run Lab? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and I think this is just coming at the perfect time for me to like just keep moving forward because this does, especially getting on that treadmill, uh, feels like- I want to know so much about Anna's like just day to day because she doesn't upload that much. And to be fair, the majority of her content are, is like clothing hauls, which is fine. I love that. But she's also taking us on this health gurney, but also not taking us. Like we're not getting any what I eat in a days. We're not getting any, pardon me. We're not getting any like calorie counts. We're not getting any like, not even like, my goal is to do 10,000 steps today. My goal is this. It's just like all of a sudden we've gone. I feel like we've just, well, no, she's been running for a year. To be fair, this content has been pretty consistent, but just the only goal I can think of for Anna is running a 5k, which cool. That's great. That's awesome. Or a five mile marathon. 5k? That's cool. That's great. But like, is there other health stuff involved in this or is it just that fitness goal? A little bit impossible and i have more doubts now <laughs> lily very that i don't trust any of these doctors <laughs> than they did coming into this she's dramatic though. oh we're out for a walk oh my god this puppy So many shots. This place is lovely though. So I think the reason a lot of plus size people don't exercise or at least don't consistently exercise is like- As a plus size person, educate me. We get fed like unrealistic expectations of what should be achievable on your first time. Okay, whew, whew boy, this is gonna be a lot. 
and I think when someone presents something as like an easy at-home workout or like um, a simple uh, Ma'am, you just drop your dog's leash. Hopefully they don't run away. Well, step, right? And okay. then you take that step and it's really fucking hard and you can't Swear do her. it. Yeah. You're incapable of completing what's supposedly easy. Yeah. That puts a, like, mindset... It, it, sorry, it creates a mindset that, like, you, you are so far behind that it's impossible that you can't even do the easy workout. As a bigger person who has been challenged pretty consistently over the last, what, five years? In terms of health goals and abilities and capacities and capabilities and all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. If you're doing things like sitting at home and looking up like easy at home workouts and they're doing things like, okay guys, so we're going to start off with 10 push-ups and you get down and you get on your toes and you get on your hands and you can't even do one. Relatable. Been there. Um, yeah, that sucks. But not every like, not everybody views that situation, I guess, as an insurmountable, impossible obstacle to overcome. Some people see that as an opportunity to be like, okay, great. So I cut my upper body strength sucks. There are two, like, there are two thoughts that go into my head. One is I'll adapt and I'll go to like a half push up or a kneeling push up or or something to or an assisted push up or a bench push up or whatever. I'll change it up and see if I can do that. And oftentimes those like at home workouts will be like, yep, great. There's an alternative workout if you find this too easy and it's this, or if it's too hard, it's this. Um, and sometimes even the things that are the easiest possibility are really hard. Um, that's when I'd probably advocate for finding someone who is a professional and speaking to them about goals and and wants and what you want to do. And for a lot of people, I think, well, maybe not. Well, yeah, I'd say a lot of people. A lot of people might see something and be like, right, I'm going to try this thing. Oops, I failed. Giving up is kind of the easiest thing, right? It, it's easy to just be like, I'm not doing that. That's ridiculous. I'll never be able to do that. And But that is kind of just the definition of giving up. And like, that's not limited to just working out either. That's ev a lot of things in life. And you know, it sucks that some people do are confronted with challenges and just say, I can't do anything about that. What's the point? I'll just not even bother. Um, and I feel like for me, I was very like that pre pre 2020. Um, and I'm just very grateful that I'm not now because I had the ability to kind of see that that person was not who I wanted to be and I certainly wasn't be happy being that person. Now, I love a challenge. I love it. I love it. I look at my app sometimes when I go for a workout and I'm like, I'm not going to be able to do that. I can't do that. Lunges suck. <laughs> and then I do it and I feel really good. Or I fail halfway and I go, okay, great. I failed halfway. I'll reduce my weight or I'll like try an alternative or I'll find a way like I'll find a way to stabilize or whatever like there's ways to overcome everything but giving up is kind of the worst option in all of this uh Ella thank you for being here for eight months Ella says she's forgetting that simple does not equal easy yeah exactly exactly and just because it's someone's simple doesn't mean it's everyone's simple and that's okay if it's someone's easy and it's your hard that's okay a lot of people who present themselves as let's do an easy like 20 minute at home workout have been working out for decades like, and that's okay. Everyone's in different places in their life, which is why it's beneficial to talk to a professional or talk to someone who does know stuff. And like, great. If your goal is to do one push up, excellent. We can like start at one point and get you to that. So I just hate in general the idea of like easy workouts. And I think we should talk more about the fact that like big changes take a long time. They yeah, they really do. Don't just happen from like three workouts. They don't just happen from showing up for a month or a couple months. Like I was, I was saying. I'd be interested to see what big changes she's talking about there specifically with a month to a month. But yeah, no, like it's not going to be three days of dieting and all of a sudden you're, you know, like three sizes smaller. It just doesn't, like, it doesn't, doesn't work like that. If we're specifically talking about weight loss, being in a calorie deficit, it takes time. And so does weight gain, to be fair. 
Um, but any adjustment that you're going through with your body, yeah, is absolutely going to take time. Now, things like skating, learning a new trick on skates, you can get pretty, like, pretty quickly once you get a kind of a general concept of where you need to put your body weight and what, what you need to move to be able to fulfill it. Um, but things like, you know, like increasing your bench press, that takes forever. That takes a really long time. But then again, but well, you know, then on the flip side of that, you keep lifting the heavy things or you keep, you know, running the same track. Eventually you are going to get stronger. You are going to get faster. And that's about commitment. That's about like doing the damn thing and not just doing it on a whim, but doing it with either a goal or a plan. Because if you don't like if Anna's goal in all of this is to run a marathon and that's great. That's very impressive to have as a goal. And is that, is that reasonable? Sure, I'm sure she could run a marathon. Does she have an idea of, like, pace or time or any of those things? Who knows? Go to town. But, like, if that's the only goal and it's I'm just going out for a jog, like, a few times a week, then maybe you need to look at doing more than that? Is that rude to say? When I was watching this, I was like, it was literally last week and it's been almost nine months at this point of me working out at least three times a week. Right. I'm just, said a year. Never mind. just now start to feel like it's a habit and I just now start to not feel exhausted. And that's right. like, that's nine months, right? Okay. And those are, those are really good, like non-metric, like goals, successes, achievements. Um, it's, it's great that you've been showing up three times a week for nine months it's that's great when it comes to being a habit it's great that you don't feel exhausted after you're finished but in all of this and especially people who run i feel like people who run are really about numbers you know i again this isn't a conversation about distance or pace or steps or anything it's just it's like it's like, it's like if I went to the gym and jumped on the elliptical for 20 minutes. It's like, well, yeah, great. Like, I'm on the elliptical for 20 minutes. It's not, it's not, I mean, it might be helpful to say I don't feel exhausted after it, but it's not going to really put anything in context. Like, that's not a couple weeks. And I just, the more I do this, the more I work on my physicality and just like a lot of my health choices, the more I realize that it's like, it is sold to us as something easy to fix, and it is not. Okay, I don't think anybody is sitting... I mean, even the most snake-oily of, of fitness influencers and weight loss gurus, I don't think anyone in this day and age is ever... Well, I mean, that's not true, actually. There are a lot of people out there who are like, just take this thing and weight loss will be easy. The reality is, if you're... If you are mature enough to understand that people's relationship with food often results in consumption of calories, um, yeah, no, none of it's easy. None of it's easy, but it's not easy for anyone, you know? Like, I think um, someone once said to me when I was a little bit, like, apprehensive when I first started going to gym as, a, as an adult, um... I was a little bit apprehensive and they were like, look, to be fair, no one, like everyone's there for the same reason. They're all there for them mostly, um, to, to lift things, to move, to get sweaty, to make weird sounds. Like that's just, it's just what, so it's just what, it's the place where people go to do all of that. Um, but the other thing is we're all built differently, which is genetic, but we're, we also come from all different backgrounds. Like you can't compare yourself to someone who's been, lifting weights for two decades you can't compare to someone who's like a professional soccer player you can't compare to someone who's been doing like yoga for six years like you you just comparison is the theft of joy so instead you don't buy into any of that shit you just you do it for you and you don't ever believe that changing habits and doing things that are going to alter your body significantly are ever going to be easy because they're never easy but, like, it's just not easy. It's hard work, dedication, consistently being there. That's it. Which is the easiest way to say it. So, when we are running, you actually do a very good... Oh my god, this is a two-parter. Hooray, we'll get to revisit it. job. Because you... I feel like you I've got a, like a, a diaper in my butt. Back. 
Not a diaper. Down, squeeze your butt. Oh, the TRX we love. We live, laugh, love. Make it come back out. Go ahead and lean forward into your foot and put your feet side by side. I think, if anything, this whole experience- Oh, she got new shoes and everything. Oh, I wonder if that was SponCon. It's taught me one thing. Oh, and fade to black. All right, well, that was Anna's update on her running gurney. Have fun. <laughs> Have fun. I can't wait for part two. That's going to be so good. All right, we're going to dip into her... Um, sorry, we're done with Anna. So just in case anyone's not here for Chantel, I totally understand if you'd like to hit the like button. <laughs> I feel like my studio here for foodie, though, to be fair. Um, we're going to watch just a couple of minutes of her live dinner stream. This was absolutely insufferable, and I don't think anything interesting was mentioned or had happened, but we're just going to listen into it, and we're just, just going to cover a little bit. But he says, the first milestone I set for myself was walking to the bus stop without needing to stop. Now I average over 20k steps every day, but there was a long gap in between those spins. Oh, yeah, 100%. A hundred percent. I remember when, like, 10k steps was just, like, a, a wild thought to me. And now it's like, that's just, that's just what it is. Like, that's just a, that's a day. <laughs> a white hijab, Ghostface? Hi, Tangerine. Thank you, I hope so. That you Milk, lovely to see you. How are you today? Hello, hello. Have you got a recent upload? Because I feel like you, I feel like you haven't had anything. Did I miss one? Maybe I missed one. Good to see you, though. Milk says, I literally went through this with the, the Twitter summary. DX's Twitter summary. Two. Classic. Ice cream. Exquisite taste. <laughs> Gonna be coming from your mama live? Why? Monica, marbles. He's at his fifth apartment. Tommy, we saw. <laughs> um, you'll Thunder Rain, we'll get to see the new shoes the next time Anna uploads. Hopefully soon. It'll brook, thank you. Yeah, it was really yummy, actually. But I didn't eat anything. I didn't eat any more of it because it kind of upset my tummy. Very rich in cream and butter. Okay, so in the last three days, Chantelle got a grocery haul three days ago, right? That's where she showed us off the frozen chicken breast and other things. She's eaten takeout two days after, like twice, sorry, after that grocery haul. So are we just not cooking? I feel like we're not cooking. Hi, welcome salam, habibti. Marissa, lovely to see you and good morning. You are correct. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, look, it's Foodie Beauty. Oh, Gob. What? What the hell? Hello. Uh, milk's currently waiting on an upload. Yes, excellent. Uh, Olga, Bali, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Look at this cool container it comes in. Okay, let's. Uh, this is the match booth, so let's first eat the appetizers. This is like my first meal. I slept a lot today. Oh my gosh. I don't know what's wrong with me. I think I'm having a bad mental health a few days because that's. Okay, so. Um, the most recent upload, which we're about to get to, if you haven't seen it, she's also very tired and she basically says she woke up, got food delivered, and then after the mukbang was planning to go back to bed. I am not a physical or mental health care pro professional. I think the way that Foodie is describing her um, sleep pattern sounds like fatigue. It sounds like fatigue. And now that I think about how often we've watched Chantel over the last couple of weeks and her saying how tired she is and how, how busy she is and how exhausting life is um, and all of that, I think it might be fatigue. These are pickles. Mahalid. Mahalid is how you say pickles in Arabic. I'm learning, guys. I might take an Arabic class. This is some kind of creamy... That's not happening now. <laughs> Red sauce. Yummy. Okay. Look at all the sauces. Pita chips for the soup and a lemon wedge for the soup. Oh, I think that's for the kibba. I'll ride with you until the wheels fall off. Thank you, Norma Jean. Julia, do you want this box? Watch, she's gonna, I bet you. Come, come, come. She hey, Hats, good to see Babuch. you. March 11th? No, I don't think, I don't think she's doing anything to be fatigued and tired. I think she's literally just fatigued. Oh, really? I think her body's saying, I, you need to stop. Please stop, please stop, or I'll make you go to sleep. For sure? Depends on the moon, eh? I'm in anger management. I need that. Trick. I do, Mary World? Mukhalil, Mukhalil. <laughs> I try, but some words. Like, I still say hijab and Salah's like, it's hijab. <laughs> okay, this is my favorite. Mixed kibba. Kibba. I'm gonna try with the sauce. No, he uh, had some fish earlier. Huh? Pardon me, sorry. Hi, Carrie. I'm doing okay. I was going to say, again, thinking about it, weird that they never share our meal. How are you? Okay, guys, get ready. Got to roll my sleeves. Okay, this one is potato and dill. Yum. Mmm. 
<laughs> oh my god. Foresight, Lottie? Probably not. <laughs> Mindo, when it comes to them. So Ramadan is coming. I'm trying to think of Ramadan recipes. Again, that's not happening. <laughs> From what I traditionally see. Wild how things can change in like 24 hours, hey. People meal prep, so like, um, they make like sambosa. Hi, Hissy Fitz. I saw that wipe on the abaya. Please recycle, Island. Okay. No napkin needed. Miss Southern Bell, thank you, Miss Southern Bell. That means a lot. Thank you so much for the super. He's nowhere inside. I don't think he's been there all week. Chat. Super sticker. <laughs> Melissa, front porch sitting today in Southern Illinois. Hello. Enjoy. Personal, you think he told her to leave? Maybe. Last night I. We'll talk about it. Dream of San Pedro. Very different mood in this live stream. <laughs> this one is. I don't know what kind of cabbage it is. Mmm, plain. No, happy dog, I don't. <laughs> I don't have any cork. <laughs> Two Ramadans? We'll see, Milk Tea. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Southern Bell. <laughs> Morning 100K. Good to see you. Applebee's! Welcome to <laughs> Oh, she's Dance loud. Sorry, Chad. Yeah, some of your gifted memberships are dro have dropped off, I guess, eh? Thanks for renewing Applebee's. I, I do want to do some members only live streams at some point. Okay, let's try this one and then I'm going to save the other three. Ooh, I didn't catch that on first listen. It's members only live streams. Kill by L. Mm. I can tell you if there are anything like the Phasmophobia live streams, I probably won't be watching them. How exciting. <laughs> Papa John's. Papa John's. Ma'am. Thank you. Do you guys remember when I went to Papa John's in Canada? Um, I think so. Some people called the cops on me because I thought it was burnt out of my mind. Oh, yeah. And the cop came and he shined the flashlight in my face and my eyes. He was like, you look, you don't look burnt. I was like, yay. <laughs> I wasn't. Lentil soup. Man, three courses, huh? My longest sub was my yellow... Oh my god, Home Alone Legend, hello, good to see you. Welcome, everyone say hi. Fresh. I hope you're well. Why such a huge box? Iconic loser name, by the way. Box. I don't know, Pure storage. Um, so I yell, we are having- Dark Rubber Ducky, I personally think she's in the air already. That's what I- Well, no, that's me hoping. I hope she's in the air already. Because if you notice, she's wearing exactly the same thing here as she is in the, um, the other- Sorry, the upload, the one that we're going to watch. So my thought is she filmed this and then went and had a nap for a few hours, woke up at night, filmed the mukbang that we're going to watch shortly, and then left the next day. Wouldn't that be a treat? <laughs> uh, match boost, kubba, and lentil soup right now. They called the cops, yeah, because they thought it was driving burnt. And uh, I just noticed there's no cutlery with this. I'll be right back. That also weirdly happens two times in a row. Uh, so anyway, I wasn't, and the cops flashed the flashlight in my face, and, uh... Oh. Last night I dreamt of... San Pedro. I, honestly, I can't... I don't think there's been a worse, like, a less interesting time than the time in Kuwait. Which is a shame, because I feel like it had the opportunity Anyways. to be interesting. So... Also, when did we move these couches around? Anyways. He's called the call. Peanut stew, no name, yeah. It's called mafe. It's a West African dish. But, yeah, I'm gonna put these pitas on the soup and I'll show you guys. Yeah. I gotta make my own pita chips. So yeah, so for Ramadan prep, I was thinking of making like... You do have enough pita in that freezer. Some sambusa. Um... Oh, I see. We're not even eating the food yet, and we're talking about other food. Oh. Have fun. What else do people need? Vine leaves, big batch, lentil soup. <laughs> now it's stuck in my head too, Christy. Mmm. Now, I'm going to be doing a... You think so, Tish? Yeah, it's a very different energy to the mukbang we're going to watch after this. No big up challenge? Because honestly, it's such a pain. Hi, Natalie. It's so good. It's such a pain to take off your makeup. Do you know what? Everyone's talking about it being a visa trip. I hope she's going home for good. I know that's me getting ahead of myself, but I truly hope she's going back to Canada for good. 
We'll talk about it when we get to the next one because I have so much to talk about. Like, okay, you can't wear makeup when you're praying, right? I think maybe like the only thing I'm gonna wear is lip balm and some coal. Like what I'm wearing right now on my eyes. Are you wearing coal on your eyes, ma'am? I think I think that's I I think that's mascara. <laughs> I think that's fully mascara. This great boat's obsessed with pizza. <laughs> Do I prefer Middle Eastern food over Western food? Yeah, because you know what? What is like Western cuisine? You know what I mean? Like what is, okay, like for example, what's Canadian cuisine? Put in, you know? Chantal would have you, um, chat, I don't know how many Canadians are in the chat right now. This, this individual right here would say that the only Canadian cuisine is put in. And I fucking love that. <laughs> I I can't tell you how many discussions we've had in chat about <laughs> about every other like every interesting Canadian cuisine from every province from um from the native population from Quebec from um from oh, what's that island called Prince Prince Edward is it Prince Edward Prince Edward Island um, like oysters and seafood and, and all of that stuff. All of the, like, bear claws and maple ice and all of the wonderful, interesting things that, cuisines, that Canada has to offer. And Chantal's out here being like, what, Western food? The only thing I can think of is poutine. <laughs> of course. Of course, dear. Of course. Sorry. Um, it all comes from... Because Canada is like multicultural and it's kind of like a melting pot and it's a newer country, right? So it's influenced by other, um, like there's a lot of French food. Like orange julep. <laughs> I don't know. I do like poutine. <laughs> we know, dear. We know. Condescending owls? Like who? <laughs> oh, thanks, Marissa. I appreciate it. Is he bi? He doesn't claim to be. Oh, and, um, and walking, is it walking knock? No, walking nachos? What's the one where you go and see a hockey game and you get a bag of Doritos and they split it open or they open it up and they put like beef and cheese and lettuce and tomato and sour cream and then you shake, shake, shake and then you eat it while you're walking. Is it walking tacos? That just, that screams Canadian cuisine to me. He says he's straight. American cuisine is mostly like um, burgers, fries. That's American for sure. Mm. There's some southern food that looks really good. Collard greens and stuff like that. For someone who loves food as much as foodie, she really she really don't know much, huh? Oh, loaded nachos? Yeah. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, bit what? Mixture of every yeah, everyone else's cuisine. Hi Elaine. Sorry, where's my napkin? Siggy! Whoops. We did learn about beaver tails. Was that a live stream? I feel like that was a live stream where she was going for, was that um, Halloween lights or Christmas lights? And she ended up getting to that food truck afterwards. Her and glizzies. Oh, burger fries. Iconic glizzies. I should make burger and fries someday. They have a lot of burger places here, but American food is really expensive here. Oh, I see. <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> Church spaghetti with extra parm. Thank you. Yeah, of course. It's more than just burgers and fries. There's pizza, which, which is not specifically from America, but Americans do do, do have pizza. They have deep dish. They have Chicago. Is it Chicago pizza? Chicago? No, Chicago's deep dish pizza, isn't it? Or are they different things? I'm trying to think. I don't know what I was watching, but there was someone talking about Chicago foods. Because, like, Chicago hot dogs are their own specific thing. They don't call them glitzies, though. Lane. Hi, Colleen. Lentil soup, yeah. Cornbread? Egyptian food, really? What's your favorite ghost face? I think the neighbors are fighting. This is the point in the stream where I start skipping. You should stream members only so no lifers can't snipe streams without getting in trouble. How do they get in trouble? Hawashi is so good, yeah. Hawashi is good. The bread with the meat inside. Wow, Natalie. Hi, Shelly. Um, Hawashi is like the Egyptian version of Arias. 
Francis, what's I do miss Florida pie? and Pennington's Halls, yeah. You know? I'm gonna look it up. C pie. It's against TOS, really? C Which pie. Which TOS is it violate? Ooh. I wanna know. <laughs> Shh. C I'm pie. Of, sir. C pie is a layered meat pie made with meat or fish. It is known to have been served to British sailors during the 18th century. Its popularity was passed on to the New England colonies sufficiently to be introduced in Amelia Simmons' landmark 1796 book, American Cookery. Sea pie is made by... Sorry, sea pie. That's called sea pie. It's made by lining a saucepan or pot with a thick layer of pastry and then filling the pot with alternating layers of meat, such as pork, beef, fish, or pigeon, or stew and vegetables, and topping the layered ingredients with pastry. There is no set list of ingredients. Rather, sea pie is made with whatever meat and vegetables are on hand at the time it is made. Right. So sea pie just means it's pie. <laughs> we've got we've got surf, turf, and flying animals. But it's sea pie. Noted. <laughs> we could just call it meat and veggie pie. <laughs> no, no, it's called sea pie. Starting to do more members on these streams, though. So. I was thinking I'm doing it anyway. Because oh, you're talking the about the person I think you are, but like that speaking of owl, sense. like not original owl, but the other one, stream sending, it's like they claim to be Muslim. <laughs> like my sister, I can tell you, if you want to be a haram police with me, it's very haram to be backbiting other Muslims. Why the come salam, babe? <sighs> hmm. No, uh, any other Muslim woman, we call them sister. And if it's a, if a male is talking to a, another male, a male would be would be brother, like Ahi. <laughs> they don't have Torrid here. They have a lot of clothing stores, but not a lot of like super plus size, so. Mm. But they have some. They go up some some clothes go up to size twenty-eight. Um I, does anyone else feel like we haven't seen a whole heap of the Abayas in a while? Like what happened to that shiny satin pillowcase looking one? You know the green one? What happened to that one? Hey, Blue right. Bear, good to see you. I'll save the rest of the soup as well. <coughs> Everyone's getting real mad at microwave tea all of a sudden on the internet. That's my mind by it. Chat, what are your thoughts on microwave tea? And I, you know... Um... Yeah, and what happened to the blue overshirt? The, the tartany looking one? With the buttons? No, he had dinner earlier. Faithful duo, good to see you. Nasiha. Nasiha? Also, Nasiha advice is not backbiting. People can't approach her because she blocks. That's true. She's very, um... Would sensitive be the right word? I guess. Chantal does not enjoy criticism. Whether it's warranted or not. Whether it's asked for or not. She takes, she takes all criticism as a personal attack. Which is very telling when you consider how, um belligerent she is when it comes to advice like maybe don't say those words <laughs> mm, it's fun microwave tea, tea no everyone's no on the microwave tea why not use a kettle well marissa it turns out some like it turns out kettles in america might not be as popular as the rest of the world which is wild to me something else i wasn't hungry when he was hungry so like i i have like I don't do it because I do use an electric kettle, but I can see putting just a mug of water in the microwave, or as it should be pronounced correctly, microwave, um, to bring it to, like, almost boil. But, like, in a kettle it comes to a full boil. And when, you haven't, when you're sitting down for a cup of tea, even if you're just brewing a tetley, like just some terrible tea bag, you still want fully boiling tea, not, like, microwave boiling tea. Babe, look at this this bowl it came in. He had his other wife make him something else for dinner. <laughs> look! Mick, and I don't know, we've spoken about this before as well, like the reason why Americans don't have kettles so much. I can't remember what it is, but I feel like it's an electrical thing because kettles, surprisingly, are one of the, one of the like highest consumers of energy in the kitchen, but for a really short period of time because they basically have a coil on the inside that goes from room temperature to the surface of the sun levels of heat and it requires a really large amount of energy. And I feel like it's an electrical thing in America that might differ slightly to the rest of the world, which is why y'all aren't super keen on electric kettles. 
I'm not quite sure. It's like a whole pot. Also, we're eating an entire fucking trash bin full of rice today. All right, very good. We've, we've, moved, we've moved from hubcap to garbage pail. <laughs> Something else for dinner. <laughs> this is wild. This is larger than her head, and we know that she's got a large head. This is a large head. Look! It's like a I mean, sorry, this is a large bucket. Or pot. Ta-da! <gasps> Match moves. Good judge. The judge is chicken. Ma'am, I... <laughs> I need someone to, to help me. How many cups of rice is this? I cooked a cup of rice two days ago. I just finished it. And I had rice for lunch and dinner. Twice for lunch. Um, how much rice is this? <laughs> what? This is a lot. This is a lot of rice. <gasps> Match moves. The judge. That's fucked. <laughs> like, I think that's at least two cups of uncooked rice. Possibly three. Like, that is a lot of... That's a lot of rice. That's a half a chicken. That's insane. <laughs> the judge is chicken. Match moves, the judge. Yes, the judge, yes. Wood, do you want some did judge, Wood? The Jiffy Pop match moves. She heard me. Hi, tattoo chair. This container's deep. Like, it's it's in the way of her face. Thanks, Jenna. Ramadan will be next week. I know. Are you excited, hon? So it's we gotta like, get some more like things. We gotta, we gotta get a few more things. <laughs> Eight cups according to Google. Oh, my God. We have to put the lights up if we can. You think we'll be able to? Well, you have to do it. Not me. I can't. <laughs> Again, something changed. Something changed in between this live stream and the most recent mukbang. You think you'll Fine. be able to uh, put those lights up on this type of ceiling? I don't know if we want to make some holes on there, but... Well, Elvin, no, but when you consider half the size of a chicken versus how much fucking rice she's got in front of her, that's a lot of rice. Okay, this bread is really fresh and yummy. I think I'm going to save it because I don't, I, don't, I don't really like eating bread with uh, much juice. I'm sorry, you got bread as well? Do you all think the food app is still just on Poopy's phone, or do you think Chantel's got access now? Leg either, so I'm going to save that. Okay, guys, so. Hey, Chef Leftovers. Um, <laughs> oh, that's a good idea, Tina. Just not wearing any makeup. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> Leave it to me, I will handle it. Hi, Danielle. Milk asks, are we betting Poopy argument slash outside force? I'm leaning into it. Um... Yeah, I reckon it's been, uh, I reckon it's been put forward by Poopy. Definitely. Definitely. How are you? How are you? So this is a lesson in match moves. We have the saffron and white rice mix, basmati. And we have here, these things, our little split peas, raisins, onions. It's so good. Oh, this chicken is yummy. That's so deep. So I've eaten at a lot of match moves places, but never this one, so. Um, this never. <laughs> a little late, but. I said it quietly earlier. That's enough rice for a family of 12. Well, yeah, it is a lot of rice. I'm not going to eat it at all. Tish says, did you see she renamed the name of the couple's channel? Probably to lock out Poopy. Possibly. I'm still kind of iffy on the ownership of the couple's channel, if I'm honest. Because I feel like she gave it over to him. Because wasn't there a currency conversion bit in the timeline? Or a monetization bit where everything was demonetized and then turned back on like 24 hours later or something. I don't know. I kind of... My running theory was that the couple's channel was always poopies. And that Chantal was like, yeah, no, we can like do stuff over there together or whatever. And she held the reins on her channel and Poopy had the couple's channel. Which is why Poopy put so much effort... Well, effort, I guess, into it. Not now. It'll be good for a little while. <clears throat> Let's try the pickles. Where'd they go? Ah, my bias sleeve in the dacus. Yeah, dacus says yes. We have some dacus here. <laughs> dacus. That's enough for three wives. <laughs> Stop it. Mmm. Oh my gosh, they smell like the. Mmm. Is this pickles over here? Oh. 
She looks like she's crying, but don't worry, Chad. It's just sweat. Julia, she, she stole a bone. Here. Sorry, that was so vinegary. Oh my god. Julia! Also, chicken bones cook chicken bones. Not good for animals, right? I was always told never to give cooked chicken bones. But dogs. Maybe cats are fine. I don't know. Julia! The couple's channel says tea. <laughs> it's not the spice. You know what it is? It's vinegar. Hi, Neve. Because the eggplant <clears throat> is spongy, so it absorbs all that vinegar. Like, woo. Woo. Okay, we have Mabuch. It smells spicy as well. Yeah, it's still Sala and Mariam at Sala.Mariam. So I guess she's really trying to get rid of that foodie beauty name, huh? <laughs> Green chilies and garlic and stuff. Okay. I'm going to save some for you, hon, if you get hungry later, then I don't have to make you something. <laughs> Uh, Zetsu, I would agree with you. Yes. Oh, yes. Hey, Kaylee. Like, sugar, my speech. Queen, you think this is a couple of... Oh, yeah, it is a couple of days old now at this point. Yes, you're right. It's, uh... It's, you know... Yeah, it was Chantel and Sala before, but that changed a while ago. I think that changed when she changed from foodie. Yeah, I mean, because like, everyone was like, haha, she hasn't changed the couple's channel, and then she obviously watches everyone, so went in and changed it. Like, <laughs> Yanni, it's like, um, very. Uh, you say plate milk, but I think it's a bucket. Very spongy, and all the vinegar was inside the sponge. Or a pail. I know we've had this conversation before about the difference between a bucket and a pail, and it's because there's no handle. A bucket has a handle, a pail doesn't. So technically, this would be a pail, or a bin, I guess. But we should bring back the word pale. Not not with an E, with an I. My knuckles? I don't have knuckles. <laughs> it's a tongue. <laughs> I'm chubby. I have chubby hands, fat hands. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tongue. Not booze? Alright, fine. <laughs> mm. I care. Oh yeah, Mystique. Well technically too, because both um both Julia and Howie will no longer have Chantelle about. Sorry, sorry if I missed anyone else. Yum. <laughs> Milk. Mm. <laughs> I don't know where you can buy them here. Hi, Rosemary. I got to try Mandy. I did try it once. It's pretty good, SB. All right, Chantal, um, are we done here? Because I think I'm going to move I tried Uzi rice, too. I don't. I don't. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus. We're just in with both hands now. Sorry for the up close and personal of me picking apart the chicken. but Honestly, someone could use that footage in like a horror documentary. It's like, you know, you know, the scenes in the ring where they share, show all like the fast, gross bits, like the worm crawling out of the eye and stuff. It'd just be like, it'd basically just be this, but, but with ominous music over the back of it. Sorry for the up close and personal of me picking apart the chicken, but it's just so yummy and tender and yummy and tender and yummy. <laughs> all right. I would say the footage would also include Chantel's voice saying yummy and tender, Yummy. Seagulls, hello. Lovely to see you, mate. Thank you very much for the support, and I appreciate it. I hope you're having a good day. Yum. <laughs> Shake your booty. I don't know why I have that song in my head. And creamy? Really? Yeah, Ella, me neither. I don't mind, but I just, I don't need to see Chantel's greasy chicken fingers, like, all up in the screen. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Neve. Just don't need them right there. I'm not on insulin, no. Yeah, I know, I only am holy. I'm on medication, <laughs> though. That seems to be, like, helping. It's called Genumet. It's a mix of metformin and something else. Honestly, her face is, like, three inches away from the bucket. She may as well just... Nom, nom, nom. There's raisins, babe, and then there's something else. It looks like yellow split peas. Oh, I'm, I will definitely pray for you, Danielle. Can't even be bothered to come out of the room. I hope you'll be okay. That was poopy. <laughs> well, Lottie, I need everyone else to experience what it's like for me having Water, yeah. a screen right um, here. Rosemary, I don't know. <laughs> I could cut down on rice. But. Why would I do that when I've got a bucket of it? It's hard. <laughs> 
It is, look, it is hard to cut down on comfort foods. It's, it's very hard, especially when you water it like this. Especially since here, everything comes with rice mostly, you know? You could cook. <laughs> That's a novel <laughs> thought. She could cook. Chicken rice. <laughs> Marissa, she could. She could cut down on rice. Yes. Spoon. <laughs> Tablespoon. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Babe? What are you doing? Oh, Julia. I told you she would go in the takeout bag. What are you doing in the takeout bag? What are you doing? You do? Julia is going to be abandoned, unspayed, unvaccinated. Oof. That's rough. You're caught in 4K. <laughs> oh. Jesus. That's okay, Tracy. Thanks for saying hey. I hope you have a good shift. What are you doing? That what are you doing? <laughs> when it's half past two, what are you doing? What are you doing? I hate it so much, Marissa. <laughs> Her little bees in face. Mm. Very delicious place. Lottie, do you think at this point in time she's eaten through the five kilos of rice already? Or is that just like backup rice? But for some reason, babe, nothing has been better than free swallow. <laughs> Ooh. What is that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Vroom vroom. That's babe. Babe, babe. <clears throat> Last night I dreamt of San Pedro. Remember I sang that? <laughs> Karaoke. Yeah, we do. Cuba Rage. We're not allowed to bring that up, though. For some reason. It was in my past. I'm not that person anymore. Fast and furious. Yeah. Definitely furious. Did you... I'm sorry, ma'am. I just have to go back. Did you just pick up something that you dropped on your shirt and put it back in the bucket? Fast and furious. Oh, yeah. No, you did. You just you just wore rice and put it back in the bucket. It was like four grains. Well, don't ever say that Chantelle wastes food because that she doesn't. She just doesn't. Definitely Ooh, gag. Definitely furious. Just like... <laughs> just put it ma'am just put it to the side I'm sure you've got a napkin or a bag or something you need to save every grain of rice in this bucket babe. I mean babe. reducing food waste is important and great but <laughs> that's so weird <laughs> just saving it for poopy <laughs> Well, this is depressing. You thought it was a vacuum? Well, she is hoovering it in. <laughs> I'll be here all night. Except I won't be. Because I need to finish soon. <laughs> I saw your comment every day for longer. <laughs> Hi, green grapes. Palette cleanser. Yeah, I'm Thank definitely going to do vlogs for Ramadan. <laughs> Oh, Those are the most sour fish. pickles I ever ate in my life. They made me choke. I can't every day. Daily iftar. That's it. I was like, what okay, the hell is she? Okay, let's try. Unless we go somewhere. Her or her now. I can try to choke. Just so ate, it was got modest a good day. Miriam for a moment. Hi, fizzy Jim. I'm telling you, you will never go back to toilet paper. It's like, no, I don't know how people still use toilet paper. I don't need to hear about your butt. Boom. TP is... Mm. Christy, wow. It doesn't matter anyway, girl. You never fucking used it. It's I don't fine. know what the dental care is here. It's great that you're washing your butthole. But I'm sure it's, you have to pay. Everyone, can we get a round of applause for Chantel for washing her butthole? Can we... A standing O. Please. But it's not that bad. Um... For root canal, canal, though, I'm not sure.
Hi, Cozy Chronicles. Oh, yeah, wet wipes too are good. <laughs> I just ate. They're better than toilet paper, but let me tell you. Well, has she was talking about how, how great the days were and she's never going back to TP, toilet paper. And I said, it doesn't matter anyway because she never fucking used it. P hands. When I was in Canada... Do you mean a wash with sunlight, Lottie? Oh, I suffered. <laughs> She's not doing the tank tanning anymore, guys, I don't think. Do hit him. I got to the Doha airport, and I saw the bidets again, I was like, oh, yes! <laughs> Alright, I'm full. Still have another meal left. Look at all the rice left. <laughs> See, she's so for she's so for a bidet, but she's not interested in the scoppies that might explain and assist in her health management. Oh well. Chicken leg. If you ever get hungry, babe, there's a whole meal for you. And it comes in its own little container like that. And you go like that. Match boost chicken. And there's lentil soup in kibba also, honey. So if your other wife doesn't cook for you, I got you covered. Maybe the other wife actually exists. Okay, we're going to leave it there and we're going to jump on over to her most recent upload, which is a mukbang, surprise, shocking, called Applebee's Mukbang. And she looks super happy. <laughs> Spoilers, she does not look super happy. Hey, Gloating, good to see you. <laughs> he's definitely there. Yeah, he's definitely, he's totally there. Totally, absolutely there. All right, let's watch this one. Yay. Not subtitles. I hate the fact that they moved that around. Never mind. Right. Skip. Skip. Ever and skip. Get your cameo today. Can't no. wait to hear from you. Goodbye. Hey, foodie. Why is your cameo still foodie if you go by everyday Miriam? You can't have Miriam. Mariam. Mariam. Fajitas. Oh, we're on fajitas. Oof. I'm the, I'm not being shady and I'm not trying to be rude, but if I woke up and looked like this, I would contact a health professional just because I, I don't know. Maybe it's the filters. Maybe it's just really bad lighting, but she looks quite gray and gray is really not a, a, a tone that you want to be waking up to, you know? You know? Hello, guys. Assalamu alaikum. Ooh, rough. Welcome back to another video. Hi, I'm going to turn you up and me down. I have down. no energy today. So. Good thing you decided to film a mukbang. Yay! So I ordered Applebee's, thinking it will cheer me up. And it does a little bit, honestly. Hey, Siege. I've been sleeping all day. My depression is out of control. It may be that I'm not a professional. The way that Chantal talks about being tired makes me think it's fatigue, makes me think it's like a physical health related thing. And fatigue is quite common in um, untreated diabetes. Fatigue can be common for a lot of things, but like considering Chantal's physical health, I would not be shocked if it turns out she's either like low in vitamins, minerals, nutrients, whatever, and her body's trying to hold itself together and she feels the effects of that, hence fatigue. So I got a lemonade. Woo, that was a lemonade, liquid sugar. Bring it on, that'll make you feel great. Chat, What? how many grams of sugar in a lemonade from Applebee's? I'm going to assume about 50 grams of sugar. And I got... Oh. <laughs> they don't even put the name brand on the bag. Applebee's. I got Applebee's. Applebee's. Get it? Bees. I got the fajitas. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, guided also could be diabetic crash. I mean, it is... There... I, I remember when we, when she first, well, when she confirmed the diabetes this like third time around, second time around, um, we were having a conversation about what diabetic shock and diabetic coma and what all of that stuff kind of looks like. And it wouldn't surprise me with Chantel's skyrocket high levels of blood sugar that she probably experiences some like 
some unconsciousness due to that. I mean, this is the lady who we watch get a 23 blood sugar reading. Like, she... And she had that shitty little broken monitor the other day, and she said, hey guys, fasted, it's 10.3 or whatever it was. Or 9.3. Um, which is still very high. <laughs> and for someone who's fasted, assuming she'd slept for, like, 12 hours. Like, that's a very high reading for blood sugar. Where's my soup? What's this? What did I order? Uncomfortable. Hello, I see you. Ah, oh, here it is. They don't give you any cutlery? That's not even cool whatsoever. It's a shame you're at home where your cutlery lives then. I'll be right back. All right. I can't wait for her to go back to Canada, y'all. I'm so excited. Oh, where's she gonna live? Where's she gonna live? Is it gonna be with Smee or is she gonna hook Pete's into getting a place to get? Because knowing, like, when we've had discussions about, like, Canadian rental prices and all of that stuff, I don't think Chantal has the capacity. No offence, but I, like, the way that she's spoken about money and all of that, I don't think she's got the capacity to be able to put her and Pete's up again like they, they were. Um, maybe she'll stay with mum. I don't know. Who knows? By the way, this is a tablespoon. It's not a serving spoon. And to be fair, she was prefacing all of that as well when she was back in Canada and talking to, to Pete's. I feel like she, she was kind of laying the groundwork for a potential return. I don't, can we just not, please? Well, that's the thing. She wasn't even on the application for the old place mill. It was, it was all under Pizza's name. So, yeah, that'll be interesting. Oh my god, Lisa, hi. I hope you had a fabulous day at the gym. You can say, oh yeah, that's a really huge meal. Too many, por too many portions. Yada yada, but don't say something that's not. Thanks. No. All right, so I have their creamy um, broccoli soup. Yum. Let's try this. Bismillah. Why is it that color? Broccoli soup orange. Oh my gosh, it has like huge broccoli chunks. What is broccoli soup? Mm. I assume all broccoli soup's gonna be like green ish. Yeah. Oh my god, K Buns, you're right. Good to see you. Maybe the mansion, pardon me, with the nut salsa is available. Oh, we can hope. Mansion arc. Um, garlic toast, I'm guessing. Even the way she eats is lazy, man. That's crazy. It's just, it's the sauce in the corner of the lips. Everything. Everything is wet and in the corner of the lips. As you can tell from the title. Yes. Applebee's mukbang. Or from the thumbnail. Oh, not the title. Annie, thanks again for the super chat, lovely. Annie says, we're all talking health and poppy, but... Just putting out there, it is end of fiscal. Scrambling to do my taxes, maybe she has to return for court. Oh, that's a good thought. Because I didn't... I, that's right, you guys in Canada do um, do your taxes, your financial years at a different time. Oh, maybe. Because didn't she have to come to court for the bankruptcy stuff at a similar time last year? Ooh, so many theories. I like to think it's because the Kuwait arc is coming to an end and the loophole husband is going to go away and Chantal's going to... I mean, I don't want Chantal to get back on Tinder and, like, go back to doing that. But I'm not going to lie, it was a bit more interesting than the current Kuwait arc. Um, loophole divorce, right? Loophole divorce, living with mum, trying to find Tinder hookups on the side. What joy. But you're right, maybe she's coming back for another reason, like having to appear or selling the key or something. I, yeah, I, Tish, I agree. I kind of think she's done with Kuwait. This, this freeze is not. <laughs> I, I was going to say this is unkind. <laughs> Holy shit. It's just. And see, on my screen, I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but she looks like she's looking at chat, and she's really mad. She's she's really, really mad at something that you guys said. <laughs> I 
Uh, that's fun. <laughs> Her entire personality in one screenshot. Yeah. <laughs> I read a gray milk. You're not happy. Not a happy camper. I have a huge announcement. A huge announcement. Anytime. <laughs> I am. Um, you are. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Hugh, lovely to see you. Thank you for being here for seven months, mate. Hugh says, could you not be vile just for my birthday today? Sheesh. Happy birthday, Hugh. Chat, can we get some love um, and happy birthdays for Hugh in the chat? Good to see you. I hope you have a fabulous uh, birthday. Congratulations on another rotation around the sun. Hello. That. She's pretty sure that. I like when the broccoli's smaller in soup. There was an edit there. That. Why would you edit there? I like when the broccoli's smaller in soup. Okay. Thought I'm going back to Canada. Oh! Broccoli deflection. She's pretty sure that she's going back to Canada. It's It does get my hopes up because I am so bored of Kuwait and I'm so bored of Poopy being there but not being there. It's very much giving the fleen of it all. Like, I don't care if you're off camera, dude. Like, just make a decision. Be in the content or don't. Um, I don't love the phrase pretty sure because it does make me think that she's giving herself an out for in three weeks' time to be like, oh, no, you guys, I was just joking. I'm not going back to Canada, but I am going to Thailand. <laughs> but we will see. Also, she might just be saying that because she's super concerned about her flight details and stuff. Chantal does lie. Mm. The main reasons is... The main reasons are, dear. I don't see myself getting better here. Same. Unfortunately. Oh, do you think she's mad at Poopy? Is this like some kind of... Is this the metaphorical pooping in the bed? Like revenge poops? <laughs> so many so many metaphors with poop. That's fair, Jessica. I wouldn't either. So, I feel like it's necessary. Um... I also just miss my family a lot. But that's all I know at the moment. That you kind of sort of might be going home to Canada? My depression is just so bad right now. Well, Queen, it wouldn't be the first time. Chantal definitely... Ex uh, definitely displays as a person who would want her partner to beg them to stay. Why would you for Chantal? I don't know. Have to ask Poopy. Um, I slept like... Well, their wedding anniversary is a hard one to pin down because Chantal first saw him in person on November 1st or 2nd or somewhere around there. So they were supposed to celebrate their anniversary, allegedly. I don't know. Then we got the marriage video halfway through January. So they were living illegally for at least two months. Um, yeah, not really sure. I would assume... I mean, if we are talking about the, the marriage contract being a year long, that timeline kind of makes a bit of sense. Only fell asleep at 8.30 in the morning. That's late. I woke up at 10 this evening. Early. She slept for 12 hours? Girl. Fatigue? Calling it my now. People in my family. Who want to be a support system and help me with my... Help me with appointments and coming with me. Chantel, that's all well and good, dear, but you were back in Canada in December... Right? Um, and that's when Poopgate occurred. Occurred. 
Um, and was any of that going on? Because you told us you were moving back to Canada to take your health seriously and things are on the up. And then Pootgate happened and you, you immediately whisked away back to, Can uh, to Kuwait. So this is a little bit strange for it to be happening legitimately two months later. For you to be going back to Canada for the exact same reason you told us you were doing it in December. Ha. Huh. To try to get some mental health help. Right. And again, how are you going to do all of that when you're telling us it takes... It takes years, if not decades, to get GPs and mental health assistants and... You know, Canada's healthcare system is nice, but it's not perfect. Like, remember you shitting on Canada's healthcare system? Not figuratively. I mean, sorry, not literally. <laughs> Although, maybe. No, figuratively. Here's the um, Adidas, I guess. Sour cream. No yogurt? I'm shocked. The fajita bread is, like, weird. Hard. What the hell? It's cold. Kind of looks stale. So, Jesus, how much? Fucking three lunch boxes here. <laughs> Let me do a thumbnail. <laughs> and that's exactly where I pulled it from. <laughs> what do you think this is for two? I think this might be for two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'd probably say it's what like four to six fajitas probably for two i mean there's a lot of cheese i feel like they're missing they feel like there's extra fajitas somewhere like the sorry the tortillas i don't know but it smells good oh, what was i gonna say oh yeah so i have people in my life that really um you know Sweetie, get your thoughts out, because this is challenging. As a support team with the, the mental health thing. Honestly, mental health care here is so expensive. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, I can't. <laughs> I'm just going to come right and say that I can't. We can't, like, right now. Like, it's Oh, no, I'm thinking it's meant to be, like, two pieces of chicken per fajita. No, it's meant to be one, because there's also, like, the rice and the pico and the lettuce and everything. It's too much. Like, it's crazy. And <laughs> Lottie, that's true. We did get an attempt at fajitas earlier in the week and it or last week and it was not good. <laughs> there were beans. There were baked there were fucking Heinz baked beans on that fajita. I'm failing to see any beans here. <laughs> For anyone who's relatively new, if you're hoping that Chantel's going to return to Canada and all of a sudden be responsible for her health care, lower your expectations. And it's fine, we can still go along for the ride, but just lower your expectations. Just a scotch. A little bit. Oh, Marissa, that clicky jaw is... Can you hear it? Well, Natural Ginger, maybe the perfume warehouse just isn't doing so well, and that's why Chantel's... I don't know. I, I just don't know. I She feels... I know that she's very extremely manipulative, right? The lizard part of my brain is still saying, like, this is someone who's kind of down in the dumps and sad and defeated and all of those things. But it's Chantel. You could say that out loud, and she's all of a sudden going to turn it around and just throw it right back in your face. So, whether or not she is defeated and her loophole marriage has finally come to an end and she's accepted that fact, we are still talking about Chantal. Like, she's the most delusional person on YouTube, I think. So she would never give up her loophole marriage just for the sake of her own health. Are you kidding? She'd never do that. I'm going to have to start starving myself so I don't, I'm not too uncomfortable on the plane. Don't recommend starving yourself. I don't know. I, do you know what I recommend? If you're concerned about being comfortable on the plane, just buy a second seat. 
it's fine. It's okay. You can just buy a second seat. You, you know what you could do? You could buy one seat and then talk to the airline and say, hey, I'm a person of bigger size. I'm, I'm concerned about only having one seat. I'd like to purchase a second seat. Can you help me out with that? Is there a discount? Is there a, like, is there a system that I can use? Is there something? And they might say, yeah, no, not a problem. Thanks so much for contacting us. No worries. We have a, you know, we have a, a policy that an additional um, seat for people who require it is an extra hundred dollars or whatever. Um, I feel like, like super large international airlines, pro- pardon me, probably very wet in the mouth there, um, probably have policies, procedures and offers in place for, to be able to help you with that. Um, she's never going to do that though, because she's just going to stomp her feet and demand people get moved around on the plane to suit her liking. Have you all seen June? <laughs> Lynn, thank you for being here for 27 months. I appreciate it. My friend Lynn says that starving herself equals only one serving of rice. I mean, what happened to the rest of that tub of rice? What happened to the bucket, the pail, the dumpster, the trough? What happened to all of that? The big, big old vessel of rice. Oh yeah, with Ramadan. Well, maybe outgoing flights are better than incoming flights for Ramadan. I'm not too sure, but I'd assume Ramadan being a holiday period over a month, it's probably going to... the prices. Well, milk, that's so far away, though. That's still, like, two and a bit weeks. I don't think she's got two and a bit weeks in her. This energy is giving, this is my last try, and I'm on a plane right now. But we'll see. All I'll say is if she touches down, like if the if she's radio silent for two days and then all of a sudden we get a video of her sitting in the key or outside of a McDonald's, I won't be shocked. But just so that you know. Yes? Oh, good. I know there's no, like, delicate way to eat a fajita, but... Sophie, yeah, she probably did, but she says things like that quite often. And, like, the the whole... Yeah, no. <laughs> That's what I'll be doing. I think she'd be happier in Canada. There's a lot of... There's a lot of noise on this chewing. I'm so sorry, chat. Well, that's the plan. Stan. Okay. okay, there's definitely more than four tortillas in that, okay. that so, bundle. Sour cream. Mm. Very thick sour cream. <laughs> I love peppers. Bye, Daily. Like, love peppers and onions. So, guys, um... Kuwait to Montreal flight on the 10th of March one way would be $1,800 dollary dues. Woof. One way? My health is... International flights are crazy. I mean, domestic flights are crazy. Flying is crazy. And my leg is not doing much better. We should all just get jetpacks. I need access to, like, certain things. (laughs) Oop. Maybe, like, an MRI or (gasps) something. Health gurneys, MRIs. Now, I have listened to this before and I've already looked it up. MRIs, general imaging, uh, can both identify and assist in diagnosing sciatica and diabetic neuropathy. So, we're still, we're still either or on that one. I know where I'm putting my assumption. Which is also very expensive here. Yes, even if you're an expert... Well, I mean, you're a tourist, so they're just assuming you're going back home for healthcare. Imaging is more expensive. Yeah. Now, this isn't an emergency situation, Chantal. Like, this has been going on for a hot minute. You should maybe, like, go home. Make use of the socialized healthcare over there. Insurance? Health insurance for foodie? Would that work? Oh, I forgot shoes.
Oh, sorry, chat. I've zoomed far too far. Try again. <laughs> oh, it was just her crying and eating? Okay, very good. Where was I? The way you just put that cheese on that fajita like it was guac and then picked your nose. <laughs> oh no, you didn't pick your nose. You're sucking the cheese crumbs off your pee fingers. I'd just have a way with words. <laughs> Are you enjoying this? You seem like you're not enjoying this. This is sad. This is a bit sad. You're sad. You want me to chew? This is what happens. Oh, it's our fault. Wait. It's our fault you're almost not choking on the fajita. It's time. Waste time. Ma'am, you could cut this out. You're the one doing the editing if you would like to do that. This is, see, this is the thing. She takes longer chewing and swallowing where she doesn't have that throat lube yogurt going on. Shah, hello, thank you for being here for 11 months. Shah says, incredibly sad to watch. It, like, again, we know that Chantel's manipulative and we know that she can put on an act and she can lie and she can do all of that stuff. But taking all of this at face value, which I know is very dangerous when it comes to Chantal and her lies, taking it all at face value, it's sad. Like, she's, she's definitely coming across defeated. She's definitely coming across very over it and you can hope that she'll take her health seriously and that could be a really fun gurney to go on i think there's a lot of content to be made around all of that but we have been watching Chantel for a really long time so this is not the first time Chantel's solemnly sat in front of takeout stuff to face and yeah been like this so i don't know we'll see We'll see. But just don't feel foolish if you if you are empathetic to this feeling because I feel like feel like a lot of people like innately are. Um and I am. Like I'm I'm often sympathetic to situations, not necessarily Chantel. But if taking her situation and putting it in a vacuum, like being on the other side of the planet, having absolutely no family, not being able to afford healthcare, essentially like treating your health like shit, eating takeout every day, having to rage on the internet and heighten your blood pressure for money, like I would be sad too, but you know, Chantel's Chantel. Good morning, Dala. Good to see you. Hello. Oh, and also forgiving my loophole husband who cheated on me with an audience member and showed off a scat fetish. Like, that's pretty. But see, that one in particular didn't seem to break her stride. Ain't nothing gonna hold her down. You know. No one can stop her now. What oh She's gotta keep on beezing. <laughs> She also might just be sad because she's eating grilled peppers. <laughs> Who knows? So... It's very true, Lottie. You gotta take it all with a grain of sand. Because she's gonna be mad at us regardless. It's all our fault. I always, you know. <laughs> it's our fault what she eat. She dropped that the other day, saying it's our fault that she's eating takeout because no one's interested in watching her cooking stuff. Meanwhile, I'm here screaming <laughs> that I would love to see more cooking content. Um, so, so far, it's our fault she eats fast food and it's our fault she chews. <laughs> How rude of us. <laughs> 
I always, you know, have this vision of me kicking my health issues in the butt. And then... Honestly, at this point in time, that's a fantasy that I feel like has been with her for decades. Which is really rude of me to say, but she's just not... If you don't act, do anything about it, if all you do is spend your days fantasizing about a better life and not working towards it, what's going to happen? Nothing. Fantasy. I think I'm really finally realizing, like, I can't. Oh, well, I'm not a joy vacuum. You can't do that from here. I just don't feel strong enough, like, without a proper support system. And yeah, my husband is supportive, but... Also, a more supportive healthcare system, and it's not perfect, but... I'm gonna go back. We're gonna replay that. Chat, what are your thoughts on this? I'm like, I can't... I can't do that from here. I just don't feel strong enough, like, without a proper hey, support system. And yeah, my husband is supportive, but... Hasn't she, hasn't she gone to a regular doctor in Kuwait? She's been taking B12 mystery back shots. She's gone to at least three different clinics in regards to her health. Health And yes, true, the Canadian system would be able to assist her more. But she got mad about it not working out when she went back in December. So I don't know what she thinks changed. Like she hasn't. I'm assuming she hasn't spent the last three months actively searching for a primary care physician or a GP or a family doctor, which I understand is a lot longer than three months worth of trying to find, but trying to find, like, any type of referral, mental health care assistance, anything, probably not. Also, a more supportive health care system, and... Yeah, the reason why the the healthcare system isn't supportive to you is because you're a tourist. It's not perfect, but I also have my family, you know. I don't have much of an appetite, honestly. <laughs> I just want to go back to bed. Um, to be fair, wasn't there a soup before this? So, anyway. I'd be full too. I'll obviously let you guys know more, but I'm not, <clears throat> excuse me, going to say when I'm leaving, obviously. I think she's in the air. But. Just wanted to let you know that's in the future. So. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I guess that's it for now. I don't have anything else really else to say. Oh, interesting. Um, interesting. Thank you, Lotto, uh, Lottie and Marissa. Appreciate it. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Yeah. That's all I have. For Broccoli soup. That's right. Sorry, chat. Getting distracted. I guess that's it for now. I don't have anything else really else to say. Um, yeah, that's all I have information I have for now. <laughs> so thank you for watching and uh, good night. I'm going back to bed. Bye. Okay, so she does a fade out right that's all here. I have information I have for now. <laughs> so thank you for watching and uh, good night. I'm going back to bed. Bye. She does a fade out towards the end of the um, video, which I think is pretty rare for Chantel content. She doesn't need more. Uh, she doesn't do more editing um, than than necessary, which is truly in her mind zero. I feel like. I think she's mad. I think she's mad, mad. Look at that face. Look at that face. I think she's mad. I think she's angry. I think she's probably pissed at Poopy. I think that he's not there. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. All right. Well, that's fun. Chantal's going back to Canada. I can't wait. Hopefully it'll be in the next couple of days. Because you know she moves fast when she wants to. Like on plane flights. Anyway. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope you all had a fabulous time. Please make sure you hit the like button on the way out. Take care of yourselves. Wear your sunscreen. Get your steps in. Drink your water. Hug a loved one. Have a snack. A nap. Kick your feet up. Make sure you laugh today. For those of you on the rewatch, I appreciate your comments, opinions, and eyeballs. Chat, I won't be here tomorrow, but I'll probably be here Thursday. Thursday my time. Which is usually Thursday everybody's time. But I appreciate you all. Take care of yourselves. Thank you for being here. And I'll see you all in the next video.